Okay. Can you hear me now? That's probably a good way to figure this out. Now you can hear. Is that correct? Okay. Sometimes things just don't go as planned, so uh, that's kind of what was just go happening to me. I guess I've been talking with no one hearing. So let me go back here. I've been showing you a couple of things. Ladina, can you hear me? You can type into the text box if you can now. Or you can just put your hand up. Okay, very good. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm, I've gone through these slides and I've been talking to hear my head rattle here. I'm sorry. I'm kind of uh, didn't start out very on a good note right now. But anyway, I'm going to go back and I'm not going to go through this all because I just went through the staff. But I'm going to go uh, through a couple of things here. And that is how the lines and the spaces are named on the staff. Most people know this. They remember it from being... Um, in elementary school or band or whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to point out a few things here and try to go through it quickly. Uh, the staff is the five lines, one, two, three, four, five lines, and four spaces in between those lines where the notes are notated. And um, in order for them to uh, have meaning or be meaningful, then we need to put them on a certain kind of a staff. In particular, uh, the one that we're talking about right now would be the treble, the treble clef staff. So, and each one of these staffs, we're looking at treble now, either treble or bass, there are certain names for the lines and spaces. And one way to uh, remember those is by using phrases, acronyms that will help you remember on, on the uh, treble clef spaces. Uh, the first space, always starting from the bottom, is F, A, C, and E. F, A, C, E, which spells space. And lines are E from the bottom, again, the bottom line, G, B, D, F. Or every good boy deserves fudge. That's uh, kind of the general uh, known way to do it. Other people make up different uh, ways, different sayings, but that's the one I usually use. Then for bass clef, bass clef, by the way, points out the F line. It's also called F clef. And I didn't mention, but treble clef, points out the G line, and it, another name for it is called the G clef. So in the bass clef, different lines and spaces. The bottom space in bass clef is A, next, C, E, whoops, G, all cows eat grass, and the bottom line, G, B, D, F, A. Good boys deserve fudge. Always. That's one way to remember it. And what I was saying before, kind of where I was, is why are these not the same? Why is the bottom line on the treble clef not the same name as the bottom line on the bass clef? You'll see it's a G on the bass clef, and it's an E on the treble clef. The reason is, is that... Uh, the way music is really written is to encompass a lot of different octaves. It's written, it's written on a grand staff, which combines the treble and the bass clef. So you have the treble clef and the bass clef, and they are generally combined with some sort of a bracket over here to the left and or a line, which signifies that both of these, uh, whatever's written on both of these is going to be happy, happening simultaneously as it's lined up vertically. Uh, so we usually have this space in between here 
between the treble and the bass, this space. And as you read music for longer and longer, your eye gets used to having that. And one reason is because we're going to put ledger lines, which is what I was doing when I think you both got logged in there and I figured out what was going wrong. Uh, but uh, sometimes we need to write notes down below the staff like this one which is middle C, which I was kind of showing, or above the staff. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I can write above the staff. I could put two ledger lines above the staff and uh, put a note up there. Whoops, that's not the note. And if I put a note up there, you know, it doesn't really matter what we're talking about as far as in the middle here, but I also might need to put a note uh, above the bass clef sign. And that leaves room to do that. But in reality, the way that the staff is arranged is this. And it is arranged so that middle C is in the middle of the two. There is middle C. That line that goes through there is uh, the midpoint between the treble and the bass. And what happens is, is that if you start naming notes, line space, line space, line space, line space, and you have that reference point of the C or whatever else, you'll see why the lines and the spaces are different on each one of these. Uh, I'm going to do some of them. So we said that this in between here is middle C. That's also C4. Now, if I go line space, line space, line space, line space, and I am going upward, I go up in the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I'm going to go upward here. So if the, if the C is a line note, then the next space, which is right here, is a D. The next line is an E. The next space, F. Line, G. Space, A. Line, B. C, D. And as I was saying, this is not really made for music, so I have to kind of do it the best way I can. So we have, uh, going back and looking at that, we have... Starting with C, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and going on. If you want to go backwards and go down, then you're going to do exactly opposite. You're going to go backwards or down in the musical alphabet. So I want to go this way now. So if that's a C, the, it's, and it's a line note, and then the space note below it is B. I'm going backwards. The line note below it is A. Space note, G. Line note, F. Space note, E. Line note, D. So you can see why it ends up that the names of the notes on the lines and spaces for treble and bass are not the same. I'm just going to show you here, going up a little bit. For example, look at, uh, look at the third space up note in the bass using all cows eat grass, that's an E, A-C-E. The third space up in treble is F-A-C, it's a C. So they're both third space, but one is an E and one is a C. So that's why they're different. In reality, when we write it out, we use the grand staff like this, and we use a ledger line or ledger lines below the staff, to, to write the notes on. So this is what middle C looks like. There it is. It's the next line below that. And then middle C for the, for the bass clef is the next line above the staff. 
and there it is. So that's how they got to be where they are. Uh, when you want to write notes that are either above or below the notes that you can actually write on the five lines or spaces, we use those ledger lines. And it's just like putting extra lines. I can put an extra line here, here, if I want to write, for example, uh, let's say this note right here. But I don't want to use that long line. It takes up too much space. It gets in the way of the other notes. So what I do is I just put a short ledger line. So there's one ledger line above the top line of the treble clef. That top line of the treble clef is an F. I've been doing this for a thousand years, so I know that it's an F. I don't have to figure it out, but I could figure it out by going, every good boy deserves budge, and that, that's an F. So if a note on that line is an F, here, here's the F, then the next space note is a G, and then that next line note, which is written on the ledger line, is an A. So that's how you're figuring out ledger line notes. You get a point of reference of a note that's already that you already know, a note that's on the staff, like that F right there, if you're going to go above the staff. And then you just do the line space, line space, line space thing. For example, here's, here's another one. I'm going to put two ledger lines and the note right. Whoa, that's not a note. And the note right here. How am I going to possibly figure that out? It's not in every good boy deserves fudge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the F line as the reference point. I know that's an F, and I'm going to go the musical, I'm going to say the musical alphabet using line, space, line, space, line, until I get up to whichever note I'm trying to. So this is an F. This note in the space is a G. This note is an A. This is notes a B. This note on the line whoops, is a C. You can see how they're getting all jumbled up. And then the next note there, which is the one I'm looking for, is an A. I'm going to take some of this off so you can see where it is. So if I go line, space, line, space, line, starting with F, here's F. G, A, B, C, and there's a D. Any questions on finding those? You guys can ask a question anytime. You can type it in, and I try to watch there. Sometimes I get a little behind, and I can't figure it out. But if you have anything you can't figure out, and I'm going to try to go through this pretty fast. You just go opposite uh, if you want to figure out a note that's below the staff. You're already supposed to know that one. I just did did it if a, if a note's on that line below the below the uh, C, below the treble clef staff. Uh, so let's figure out one that's even further than that. Well, which is this note. I figure out a note that I already know. I already know what line that is. That's the E line. If that's E, the space line right, the space note right before that line note, going backwards in the alphabet, is a D. Line is C. There's middle C. Space is B, and the note we're looking for is an A. So that's ledger lines. Uh, it seems more confusing than it actually is. If you get in the habit of going line space, line space, line space, line space, and then just going up the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, or going backwards 
in it, A-G-F-E-D-C-B-A-G-F, then you'll figure, be able to figure those out. Same thing with base cliff. Find the point of reference, either the top line, which is an A, or the bottom, which is a G. Remember, G, good boys, deserve fudge always. And you just figure out where that is. Let's do one on the base cliff. There's the one ledger line below the staff on the base cliff. If I know that this line is a G, then the space note that's right in here is an is a F, and then the line note that I'm looking for there is an E. Okay. Uh, sometimes you use different cleft signs, and there's a couple of those when you're naming notes on uh, assignment 2.1. This is these are called C clefts, not the treble or the bass I have up there. Actually, they're different. But uh, a long time ago, the treble and the bass clef actually used to move around and where it points out uh, a note, but now they stay remain stationary. But a C clef moves around. Sometimes it's called tenor clef, alto clef, etc. And what it does is points out by um, this little part of it. Whoops, I don't want to do it that way. Let's see if I can point that out. That part right there where you have kind of the point of that, every place where it kind of points to that line it usually is a line, it's not a space. You can, if you see that where it points to, then whatever it is pointing to there in the middle is going to show you where C is. So, for example, this note right here is a C. And the next one, this note, is a C. And the next one, this note is a C, et cetera. This is a C. And then once you know where C is, you just go about finding the other names of the notes. So uh, let's go, let's see, let's. Uh, okay, so if this, I'm on the first one there. If that's a C on a line, then you know that the next space note above it is a D. So D would be right there, and I'm going to put one in there. It's going to overlap, but there's where the D is. Okay, so on a C clef, it points out where a C is, and then that, you use that as your reference point and go from there. Okay, uh, any questions on that? Okay. Going on, remember at any time if you want to stop, stop me, I'm just um, available here to try to answer your question. Lesson 2, Assignment 2.2 is octave placement. And in this, I ask you to go and download uh, or to a site, actually, it's a site, and save your notation on this program, uh, this site that's called Note Flight. So it kind of does a couple of things. It gets you uh, putting notes onto the staff through a um, notation software, which some people are interested in using, and it's a free one. There are uh, ones that are much better than it, but it's free and it's pretty easy to start using. So that's why I, I use that one. When I'm doing uh, notation, I use a different program, which is a lot more complicated, and truthfully, it's got so much stuff on it that I can't even remember what all of it is half the time. But anyway, so Note Flight, uh, you're going to use Note Flight for octave placement. And what I'm talking about octave placement is that it asks you, this assignment asks you either to write a note that is a uh, octave above or below a given note. Now octave means uh, eight notes. So an octave is um, eight notes all together, I guess I should say, uh, eight notes 
all together. And it names the same note. Same note is named for an octave. Uh, for example, if I give you this note right here, which is an E, and I say, please write a note that is an octave higher than this E. You know it's going to be another E because it's octave. And E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E is eight notes. So uh, what I'm saying here is this is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So if I ask you to write a note that's an octave higher than the note that is given, then you're going to write this E. Now, it gets complicated on some notes because you're having to use um, ledger lines and all of that. But the one, I think the examples that I gave you, you don't get really too much into ledger lines. Uh, here's another example. Let's just try one here. If I say, write a note that is an octave lower than this note. That note is an F. I know that it's an F because I said my lines, every good boy deserves fudge. So it's an F. So if it's an octave below that F, I'm going to go eight notes below it. If I go line space, line space, line space, line space, I'm going to end up with with uh, another F if I go eight times. So F, E, D, whoops, that was kind of a flat D. That one's kind of round, whatever. D, C, B, A, G, F. There is F that is an octave lower than this F, eight notes. So that's all this exercise is getting you to do. So I wanted you to, in note flight, and when it gives you a certain note, uh, for example, let's go down here to the bass clef, and if it gives you uh, this note, here it says write the note that is an octave above it. That note is an A. You're going to, on note flight, just notate an A there. The other thing that I'm asking you to do in note flight is to uh, beam eighth notes. It has, this has to do with rhythm. And in that unit one, there's a lot of information in unit one. You can go back to it for help from time to time. It has a lot of stuff in there. But it gives the types of notes, rhythmic types of notes. And an eighth note has a one beam across the two notes, or it has a flag. And I don't have a way to write a flag here. But if you have a, if you have a note, or uh, two notes, for example, I'm down here on the bass clef, you have two notes. And I've been using whole notes because I haven't been putting stems on there. But if I put um, two notes with stems on them, and then I put a beam across here. This is called the beam. That's one beam. That makes those eighth notes. Actually, they would be filled in black, but, but the beam itself or the flag is what makes it an eighth note. Now, um, I, don't, this, I don't really have a flag here, but I'm going to show you. If I did it this way, you can either do, you can write... I guess that makes it sort of a flag. Uh, you can write them either separately with a flag or you can beam them. They're usually beamed in twos or fours. And I think I asked you in the, uh, in the exercise to try to beam them on uh, note flight. So try to figure it out how to do that. So that's the two things you're going to do. You're going to write... You have a given note, you're going to write a note either an octave above it or an octave below it, and you're going to try to beam some eighth notes using the one beam across the top. Then you save that in note flight, or 
it, well, you have to save it, but you send me the the URL and then I can go look at it from the URL. And mainly, yes, I'm interested in you knowing what an octave is, but I want you to just kind of experiment a little bit with note flight uh, notation uh, program. So uh, this is what the beams and the flags actually look like. There's two eighth notes here at the beginning, and they have the one flag on them. You will find out that an eighth note has a flag, one flag, or it has the one beam when you beam them together. And they can be done either way. Lots of times they are beamed like this, but it is not incorrect to put the flag to put two of them together either. That's kind of what you're trying to do in the note flight program. Any questions on that? Is everybody good? Uh, the ne next time, if you, I'm trying to get an archived lesson and a real-time lesson for each one of the lessons uh, in the class. And next time, if you try to, if you log on, you can try a microphone, and then I can hear you speak as well. And then you're not at such a disadvantage there. Okay, going on. Lesson two, assignment 2.3 is the octave designation by the most recent method. It's very confusing in the book. The book uh, has its problems. It's the best of what we have, but uh, it does have its problems. The most recent method uh, is the method that is indicated on page 18 in the text at, on the top example. That's the one I want you to use. And the one that I want you to use uh, uses, designates, I should say, middle C, this middle C, whoops, I don't want to do it that way. This middle C right here, it designates it as um, C4. So that tells me where in which octave and where on the piano, whether high or low, where it's located. So I'm looking for where these notes are located on the keyboard and how they're sounding. Are they sounding high or are they sounding low? That's C4. Now, sometimes the the note, which is that there's middle C, it can be written as a treble clef note or it can be written as the bass clef note, which is what we did before when we were looking at the grand staff. That is also middle C. Now, does it change because it's in bass clef? No, it doesn't change. It's the same note. It's the same spot in the keyboard. It's C4 also. So this C4 up here is written in treble clef. This C4 is written in bass clef. Then on page 18, when you look at the um, example there, you will see that if you are going upward, here's C4. Then the next C upward is C5. The next C is C6, and this one is C seven. Same thing going backwards. If this one is C4, let me just put that in there. Whoop. If that one is C4, then this one is C C2, all right, and this one is C1, and then this one is designated as just C. So what you do in this exercise is to figure out which octave the notes that are given in the, in the examples that you're going to tell me about, uh, which octave they're in. And the way it goes is notes from, if this is C4, 
all the notes in between here going upward or C4 notes until you get to this C and then they become C5 notes. So it's just a way of telling where the note is on the keyboard. If you find that note on the keyboard, then you'll you'll know. You'll know that uh, if you say C5, you look on the keyboard, and, and you should be able to figure out where it is. Okay, so here's the keyboard. And I've just designated this C as C4. Now, in, uh, in Lesson 1, it, the reading assignment is to read Unit 1 and look at all of that. So you should be familiar with the keyboard and how to figure out what a, where a note is on the keyboard. But in case you didn't, the way you figure out where any C is, is you look for two black notes. And you go to the white note that is directly adjacent to that group of two, the left one of the group of two, directly adjacent to it to the left on the white note is a C. And I always use C as a point of reference. You can use the three black notes as reference points too. The note, the white note that is directly to the left of the first of the group of three the white note right there is F. So um, using what either one of those as a reference point is fine. That's a C, and this one's an F. So once you figure out where those are, same thing as the notes. You can figure out any note on the keyboard. Um, if this note is a C, then the very next note is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, do you notice that that C is right here again, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, there it is right by that uh, again, and if I'm going backwards, you're going to go backwards in the musical alphabet, if this note is C, then this note is B, A, G, F, E, D, C, there it is, B, A, G, F. So if you're going to the left, you're going down, getting lower, goes backwards in the musical alphabet. If you're going to the right, it's going upward, getting higher, and um, it's um, going upward in the musical alphabet. Okay, so anyway... After all of that, if this is C4, that's middle C. We know that that's middle C. And middle C is written right here on the staff. That's middle C. So if you know that's middle C, the next note, D, right here, is going to be right there on the keyboard. Right there. There's C, there's D, there's E. So that's how you're going to figure out in between the this, this staff, the notation on the staff, and where the notes are on the keyboard. And as you do these assignments, you'll be able to figure out a little bit better. Now, one thing you want to know about is uh, half steps and whole steps on the keyboard. And I'm going to explain that a little bit right now. Uh, if this note is C, if you go to the very next note, does not matter if it's a white note or a black note, the very next note, if I go upward, to this note, the very next note that it's touching, which is a black note, then that is a half step, what's called a half step. If I go upward to the next note, it's a white note. That's a half step. Half step, half step, half, 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 half. half. So that's, that's half step. 
doesn't matter if you're going upward or down, downward. Starting on the C, the very next note, which in this case is a white note, is a half step downward, 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 half step downward. Half step downward. So it's going to be important to you to understand half steps and whole steps pretty soon. Um, okay, a whole step then is two half steps. So from this note, skip this second note, I don't know if you can see that or not, which is a black note. You skip that note, that's one half step, and then the next note makes it two half steps, so that's a whole step. So from the C to the D is a whole step. From the G to the A is a whole step. From the F to the G is a whole step. Well, what happens if it's from the E? I still have to skip a note. So from E to F sharp is a whole step. And we're going to be getting into sharps and flats. But uh, one of the definitions is a half uh a sharp raises a note a half step, and a flat lowers a half step. So you need to be aware of half and whole steps on the keyboard. You'll get more of that later. Uh, any questions on half and whole steps on the keyboard? Or octaves? There's, uh, for example, let's just see here. Here's an F. And that would be, with this designation, that F right there. I can tell because I'm using C4 as a reference point. But if that if C4 is there, then this F that's here is F3. And you can look on those charts uh, that are there. There's two different charts that you kind of have to go back and forth with. Just be sure you're using what is called the most recent method of designation, and that's the one on the top, uses C4 as middle C. Okay, everybody good for that one? Okay, uh, you don't turn in 2.4, and I just... I'm going to go over this. I just went over whole steps and half steps, but there's two different – this slide got messed up, by the way. But there's two different types of half steps. One is called diatonic, and the other is called chromatic. And I'm just going to go over this with you. Diatonic means that the next note that will be named as the next letter name of the musical alphabet. So that sounds a little confusing, but um, – Here's C right here, and if I go a half step up to that note, I can't name that as C sharp. I have to name it as some sort of a D, and so I have to name it as D flat. So the flat lowers the D a half step. And the next assignment we're doing in harmonics, and I'll show you about that. But diatonic means it goes from C to D flat has to be called C to D flat or E to F or G to A or B to B to uh, going downward B to A or E to D. If it's a if it's a chromatic half step, then you name it as the next note is named as the same letter name as the one before. So if this is C and then I na I name a half step above C, I name that as C sharp because the sharp raises it a half of a step. So that's named as C sharp chromatically. Here's G. Upward from G is G sharp. That's a chromatic half step. Here's D. A half step up is D sharp. Here's G. A half step down is G flat. So you just say the name same note the name same name of the note and then use the sharp or the flat. Here's D. That's D flat chromatically. So that's chromatic. Okay, this is a half step diatonic. G to 
A flat. I have to name it differently. C to D flat. Anyway, so those are diatonic and chromatic. Uh, then in whole steps, you name these diatonically. Goes to the next name of the note. A to B. Whoops, that's not an A. A to B. That's a diatonic whole step. Notice that I skipped a note in between there. Then going downward, A to G would be a diatonic whole step downward. I skipped a note. So that made it two half steps to go there. What if I start out on one of the black notes? Does that matter? Not really. Here's a C sharp. I'm skipping this note. And there is D sharp. C sharp to D sharp is a whole step. It's called diatonic. Here's an F. F, skip the next note. And a whole step upward is G. Diatonic and chromatic and half steps and whole steps. And those will be important later. Okay. Now what happens with these, it's called enharmonics. Every note can be named in different ways. And that's what I was just kind of doing. I don't know if you got that or not, but enhar enharmonics. With the exception of G-sharp and A-flat, every tone can have three different names. If it wasn't confusing enough, now every note can have three names. Wow, that's really stupid. But you're going to have to understand that because once you start intervals and making chords, you have to know that. You have to know the different names. These tones or notes are named differently, but they sound the same. The explanation for enharmonics is on page 16. And you have an exercise uh, on assignment uh, 2.5 that shows the keyboard, and then it asks you for the names uh, that that note will be, the three different names or the two different names or however many it is. You're going to have to figure out how many. So I want to show you what happens with this. For example, uh, if I want to find out the names of this note. Now that is a G, by the way. How did I know? Well, I figured it out at some point because maybe I looked at where C was. I don't know, but, uh, you know, I, there's C, D, E, F, G. So I know that's a G. you got to figure it out first what the note is. Okay, so I know that note is a G. I want to name it uh, different ways, though. Uh, I'm going to name it... Uh, as the note above it, uh, so I'm going to name the G as some kind of an A. And here is A right here. How can I possibly name G, this G that I'm looking at, as a kind of an A? I can use, do it by using sharps and flats or double sharps and double flats. And there are such things as double sharping or double flatting something. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, so if I say that this note is C, let's use C for easy example, C. Here's C sharp, a half step higher, and C double sharp is right there. So it's just two half steps is a double sharp. If this is G, this note right here, if this is a G and I go lower a half step, that's G flat then this note is G double flat. So you have uh, sharps, flats, double sharps, and double flats. And whenever you are uh, using the symbols, there's a, you can use a little X for double sharp, and then just two flats or two lowercase b's for, um, for uh, a double flat. So you can use a little X, or you can use two sharps. It doesn't really matter. All right. So what the exercise is going to do is going to ask you uh, 
to put the different names of a note. And let's see here. Let me find one that might be one that uh, might help you out here. Okay. So, for example, let's use this one. Going to ask you this note right here. And it's going to give you that we want three different names for that note. Uh, is D one name for that note? You can answer yes or no by typing if you want. Is D one name for that note? Yes, it is. So right away, I have one answer for that, right? I know it's going to be called a D. Now, what else can I call that? I might have to use double sharps or double flats, either way. Uh, how can I name the D as the note as a C, which is below it? C. Well, there's C, and there's C sharp, and there's C double sharp. So here's another question. Is C double sharp the same note as D? C double sharp the same note as D? Yes, it is. I just showed you that. Okay. Then you have to name it one more time. Uh, and you want to name it as the note above it. It's a D. We started out with a D. So now we're going to name it as some sort of an E. So there's E. There's E flat. There's E double flat. So is E double flat the same note as D? Yes. So we started off with that note, that regular white note, which was a D, and we needed three different names for it. So it's named D, it's named C double sharp, and it's named E double flat. Okay, let's do one more. Is that clear to you what I'm doing there? Once you start working with the keyboard and the half steps and everything, it should get easier in sharps and flats. But um, let's try another one here. Okay, let's start with this note right here. This is an. First of all, tell me what note that is. It's an F. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so we know that the first name is going to be an F. That's what I'm starting out with. It is an S. Okay. Now, I want to name it as some sort of an E. So here's E. And then the very next note higher from E is called E sharp. So is E sharp? the same note as F. Yes or no? It definitely is. Not E double sharp. Do you see why E double sharp is not correct? I'll show you in just a minute. Let me go ahead and name it as a G, and then I'll show you why E double sharp is not correct. E double sharp, well, let me just show you right here. E double sharp is actually, whoa, this note right here. See what I mean? I'll show you better, but if I erase it, it's going to erase everything at this point. Okay, so now I have F. I want to name the F as the note next to it, a G. So there's G, there's G flat, and there's G double flat. So that note F can be named as E sharp and G double flat. Yeah, uh, what happened, uh, Ladina? I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Ladina, is that correct? 
from E. Here, we, here's the note we started with. We started with it. Whoops. We started with F, and we want to name it as E. So here's E, and one half step is right there. So it's just E sharp. You understand why it's not E double sharp? E double sharp brings it up to there, makes it a completely different sounding note. Okay, so those are called enharmonics. It's actually a little bit easier maybe in your assignments on page 28 in your book because it shows you the keyboard and it tells you by circles how many uh, different enharmonics you're going to have to name it as. Uh, so it's, it's pretty easy. You're going to name it as the note below it and as the note above it. And, you, and most of the time you're going to have to use double sharps or double flats. Okay, so... That's all the stuff in lesson two, all the assignments. Uh, any questions, anything you want to ask me about? You can, it doesn't have to really pertain to the class, I guess. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop archiving this right now. Uh, and then you can ask if you have anything else.